Hi folks, Dr. Stevens here with the last of our sensitivity discussion. This is part four of the Stanbridge Pharmaceuticals problem. Here we're going to be talking about how to look at both OFCR and right-hand side ranging in the cases where we want to change more than one quantity at a time, and also take a look at what would be the effect of changing a left-hand side of a constraint. In the first lecture in this series, we introduced the Stanbridge Pharmaceuticals problem, we formulated it, put it into Excel, and found its optimal solution. In the second part, we talked about right-hand side ranging, that is, changing one of the numbers over here on the right-hand side of the constraints. Those numbers generally represent quantity available of something, or quantity required of something, or in the case of a conservation constraint, something a little more complicated. We saw that as long as the right-hand side of the constraint isn't changed too much, the optimal shadow prices stay the same, and we can use those to figure out what's going to happen to the optimal objective function value. In the third part of this series, we talked about changing the objective function coefficients, one of the numbers in this row here. The objective function coefficients always represent the worth per, per unit of a variable, where worth is whatever the objective is measuring. So here the objective is profit, therefore the numbers that we're changing are the profit per unit of something, like the fact that we make $300 per ounce for making the tachyon pharmaceutical, and these numbers here, the costs that we have to pay our employees for each hour that they work. That is the negative profit, that's the cost. But how about if you want to change one of the numbers in this big box down here? Well, those are the left-hand sides of constraints, and the answer is in general, your answer to me will be, I can't tell you what's going to happen. And the reason is this. We've seen that if you change a single right-hand side, that within the right-hand side range, the shadow prices stay the same. They change linearly. I'm sorry, they don't stay the same. They change linearly. I'm sorry. Within the right-hand side range, the optimal schedule changes linearly. The shadow prices stay the same. Within the objective function coefficient range, the optimal schedule stays the same, and the shadow prices change linearly. But if you change the left-hand side coefficients, in general, you'll introduce a non-linear effect to the way that the shadow prices and the optimal schedule changes. And that's just too hard for 291. There's a tool called Solver Table that you can use in Excel that can give you a pretty good idea of what the effect is, but for our purposes, the answer is, if you ask me to change the left-hand side, I just can't do it. Okay, how about if you want to change more than one objective function coefficient or right-hand side? Well, if you try to mix and match, that is, to change some objective function coefficients along with some right-hand sides, then the answer is no-go. I can't tell you what's going to happen. And this isn't surprising. Changing a right-hand side, in general, will preserve shadow price, but not optimal schedule. Changing an objective function coefficient within the range will change an optimal schedule, but leave, uh, will leave the shadow prices changing, but will preserve the optimal schedule. If you're changing one of each, the question is, what do you think is being preserved? And the answer is, probably not much. So a mix and match of objective function coefficient ranging and right-hand side ranging together is something we can't do without rerunning the program. But that leaves open the idea of changing more than one right-hand side at a time, or more than one objective function coefficient at a time. And sometimes you can get away with that, although it's not quite as simple as you might think. I'm going to demonstrate this by looking at the objective function coefficient ranging and considering how much the junior chemist charges for an hour of overtime and how much the regular tech charges for an hour of regular time. Those are $45 and $20. Suppose that each of them were willing to take a $1.5 pay cut in order to help out the company. What would happen? Well, let's look at the sensitivity report. Here's the OFCR part, and because these are negative numbers, taking a pay cut from $45 to $43 is actually an increase of two for the coefficient, while changing, taking a pay cut from $20 to $18 would be a increase of 2 in that coefficient. I'm not talking about $2, I'm only talking about $150. So we can see that making the uh, pay here negative 43.5 would be within inside the range, and making this negative 1850 would also be inside the range. I'm okay as far as each individual constraint. That means that this change by itself, or this change by itself, would not change my optimal schedule. But how about the combination? I'm going to find out. I'll change the negative 45 to negative 43.5. That's a buck and a half pay cut for overtime for the junior chemist. And I'll change the negative 20 to a negative 18.5. That's a dollar and a half pay cut for the uh, lab tech. If I can type, there we go. 
had made two changes that were both inside the respective OFCR ranges. If the entire combination is inside the OFCR range, these numbers should not change when I rerun the program. 7, 9.2, 8, and so on. Let's see if they do. 7, 8.75, 8, and so on. We definitely have a different solution. And this is what you can expect in general. The fact that each individual change stays inside the right-hand side range or the OFCR range is not enough to guarantee that the combination does. How can we figure out if we're going to be okay, if the combination is going to respect the OFCR behavior or the right-hand side behavior that we expect? Well, let me change the numbers back to where they were, and we'll find out. The strategy is this. Take each change that you want to make, either in OFCR or in right-hand side, not both, and divide that change by the allowable size change in that same quantity then add up the results. If the total is more than 100%, the test fails, and I can't tell you whether things are preserved or not. But if the total comes out to be 1, that is 100% or less, that means that the optimal schedule is preserved in the case of OFCR range, or that the right-hand side range is preserved in the case of right-hand side changes. Let's see how it would work here. Let's get an example of how this would work. We'll look at right-hand side ranging. All right, suppose, for example, that um, the junior tech, the lab tech, can work on his own without supervision for two hours. That would correspond to raising the right-hand side of constraint 5 by 2. While at the same time, the junior chemist can only work for up to one hour of overtime. That would reduce the allowable overtime from 2 down to 1. Is this combination going to preserve shadow presses? The individual changes themselves will, because the allowable increase is 6, and we're only increasing this one by 2, while the allowable decrease is 2 here, and we're only decreasing by 1. But how about the combination? Let's figure it out. In constraint number 5, I want to raise the right-hand side by 2. I'm going to divide that by the allowable increase in that constraint, which is 6. I've used one-third of the allowable increase on constraint 5. How about constraint number 9? I'm decreasing the right-hand side by 1, and the allowable decrease on the right-hand side for constraint 9 is 2. So I've used 50% of the allowable decrease. When I add these two together, that comes out to be 83%, and the important thing is that that's less than or equal to 1. As a result, I'm okay. Since this is a right-hand side constraint, that means I'm okay in that the shadow price is going to be preserved. So what's the effect of the combination? I've increased this right-hand side by 2, and the, allow, the uh, shadow price is 1, so that effect will be to increase my profit by 2. I've decreased the last right-hand side by 1, the shadow price is 0, so that's going to decrease my profit by 1 times 0, which is 0. Therefore, the combination will increase profit by 2. And we can check to make sure that that's true if we want. But let's go on and try a different example. Let's try one more. Suppose that the lab tech is willing for the good of the company to take a cut in pay to the order of an, a dollar and a half. The junior chemist is so impressed by this that she says she'll do the same, taking a dollar and a half less per hour for both her regular time and her overtime. That's going to be affecting these three numbers here. And because they're currently negative, indicating costs, a pay cut for these people actually means that the coefficient will increase. A dollar fifty pay cut makes a negative twenty into a negative eighteen and a half, and so on. Can I tell you what the effect is of all three changes? As you can see, increasing each of these three coefficients by one and a half is perfectly allowed. It's inside the range. But that doesn't mean the combination is okay. We have to use the hundred percent rule. Let's do it term by term. The first coefficient, the one for this constraint, is being increased by one and a half. I have to divide that by the allowable increase, which is, if you'll remember, infinity. It says 1e plus 30, but it means infinity, and the answer here comes out to be something so close to zero, it is essentially zero. Dividing by infinity gives you zero. The second one, the June overtime, the increase that I'm trying to make in the coefficient is one and a half, the allowable increase is two. When I do the division, I get 0.75. Now I do the same thing for the third one, the lab tech. The coefficient is increasing by 1.5 to correspond to the $1.5 decrease in cost. So I take 1.5 and divide that by the allowable increase for the lab tech, which is 2. 
that's also 0.75. If I add those three numbers together, I obviously get a dollar and a half. I'm sorry, 1.5. And the important thing about that is it's bigger than 1. Because it's bigger than 1, the 100% rule fails. That doesn't necessarily mean that the optimal schedule will change, but it might. I can't tell. So anything which is based on the optimal schedule not changing wouldn't work. If I'd only made $1 changes for each person, the total would have been 100% and I could have said the optimal schedule would stay the same. That's basically it for 100% 100% rule and it for our discussion of sensitivity analysis. I hope these videos have helped you a bit and have a good day. I'll see you later.